hello and welcome friends to our channel intro mech and in the last session we have discussed about the metal casting process now we are going for the metal forming processes so first of all we will know what is a metal forming process so in case of metal forming process the force applied on the body is such a way that it can be greater than the yield strength of the material but it will be lesser than the ultimate strength of the material that means the material will experience a plastic deformation that is the permanent deformation so we are pushing the material greater than its yield strength so that there will not be any elastic recovery of the material and the material will enter into the plastic zone so the stress applied if we consider sigma y is the yield strength sigma is our applied stress uh, uh, and sigma u is the ultimate uh, strength of the material so the force which are we applying on the material the stresses induced in the material are such a way that they will be greater than the yield strength and lesser than the ultimate strength of the material so this is our forming process and there are a lot of uh, forming processes which we will see one by one first we will know what are the advantages and what is the cold forming what is the hot forming okay so what are the advantages of this process now the wastage in this process is very less uh, as we have seen the casting process at a, the end there is fettling process in which we have to remove the unwanted runner riser so there is a wastage uh, but in this case there is very less uh, less wastage then grain orientation is possible so this is another very important uh, thing regarding the forming process because grain orientation is related to the properties of the component so if we are able to change the grain orientation we can change the properties as we want mm, as we know if the material is isotropic if it is isotropic isotropic means its properties in say x y and z direction are same now the orthotropic material uh, the stresses in the two directions are similar and other direction is different that means sigma say x will be sigma y but it will not be equal to sigma z and there are anisotropic materials that means sigma x is not equal to sigma y is not equal to sigma z okay so all the properties in all directions will be different so many times we require the component uh, in such a way that it should carry more load in one direction and lesser load in another direction so here comes uh, the forming in picture because it converts the isotropic material into orthotropic material so we can get different properties in different directions so this is the thing material properties can be changed with this process and we can get a good surface finish here uh, as we seen in metal casting the surface finish is not good so in this process we can get a good surface finish now what are the disadvantages uh, we have to apply a force so that the material will enter into the plastic zone and that's why there is energy consumption which is very high so power required for the operation is higher then in forming there are different processes like extrusion then drawing then forging and is one of the operations now in except forging in all other processes we get only uniform cross section we cannot alter the cross section we cannot vary the cross section so this is one of the disadvantage uh, we can get a different cross section but only in case of forging operation so these are some 
disadvantages of uh, this process now let's see what is cold working and hot working so all uh, the metal forming processes can be carried out uh, like cold working or hot working now it is very important to know what is basically cold working and what is a hot working cold working it doesn't mean that we are not supplying heat and we are carrying out the process without temperature so this is a wrong conception in cold working also we are heating the material and in hot working also we are heating the material the difference is the temperature at which the cold working process is carried out is lesser than the recrystallization temperature and in case of hot working the temperature at which this process is carried out is greater than or equal to recrystallization temperature so the recrystallization temperature this is very important terminology and this recrystallization temperature is generally one third to one half of the melting point of the material now we have to know what is this recrystallization temperature now whenever we consider the material there are grains into the, in the material and these grains when they get some kind of energy they try to change their behavior and that's why the material properties also changes now when they get this threshold amount of energy they start changing their behavior and at some temperature this transformation gets completed that means the behavior of the grains gets changed and this temperature at which this transformation is completed is called as recrystallization temperature so when we supply the heat the grains absorb the heat and when there is a threshold temperature reaches at that moment they start changing their behavior their properties now after that temperature again some temperature is required for the complete transformation so the temperature at which the complete transformation has happened this temperature is called as the recrystallization temperature now suppose if we heat the material above the recrystallization temperature there is a grain growth so it is called as growth of the grain because it has already changed its behavior so whatever extra amount of heat you are supplying is utilized for the growth of the grains so this is the concept of recrystallization temperature so it has a lower a recrystallization temperature and a higher a lower we can say the start of the transformation and the end uh, is the higher uh, uh, temperature so we can say this recrystallization temperature is considered as the ending point where the transformation has completed so this concept is important now as we say if the working temperature is less than the recrystallization temperature it is called as cold working now this recrystallization temperature is dependent on the melting point now very interesting fact is uh, it's not always that if there is very high temperature then only it is called as hot working let's ex uh, understand this with the example here we have two examples consider now these two cases now the lead and tin these materials have a melting point which is very low so if we consider one third of that melting point which is almost less than the room temperature what does it mean it means that if we are carrying out some process on lead and tin at a room temperature it will be the hot working process why because this room temperature itself is less than the recrystallization temperature of the material so that means uh, that means the recrystallization temperature of these materials is lesser than the room temperature okay uh, so this temperature so if we carry out 
the process at room temperature itself it will be a hot working process it doesn't mean uh, it is not like the room temperature is lesser so we are considering it as a cold working no we have to see this temperature is lesser than the recrystallization temperature now again if you consider zinc and cadmium the room temperature is almost equal to the uh, recrystallization temperature okay so uh, for zinc and cadmium uh, the when we are deforming these materials at a room temperature so it is uh, considered as a hot working process because the temperature is greater than their room uh, recrystallization temperature on the contrary if we considering the tungsten let's consider the tungsten now for the tungsten the melting point is 3400 degrees celsius so its room uh, its uh, recrystallization temperature is around 1133 degree celsius okay now if we are carrying out a process on tungsten let's say at 1100 degree celsius will it be a hot working process no it is still a cold working process because this temperature is still lesser than the recrystallization temperature if we carried out it at 1200 degree celsius then it will be considered as hot working process only so this is the importance of recrystallization temperature of the materials and all these processes are based on this recrystallization temperature so it is very important to understand the basic concept of recrystallization temperature okay now moving on what are the differences now we have seen the cold working and hot working process so what are the advantages and disadvantages of uh, these processes which will help us to select a proper process so first if we consider the temperature required to carry out the process we have seen for the cold working the temperature required is lesser than the recrystallization temperature and for hot working it is uh, greater than or equal to the recrystallization temperature now energy required uh, for cold working process we require more energy as compared to hot working process now oxide formation now as the temperature in cold working is lesser than the hot working there are less chances of oxide formations so uh, in the hot working as the temperature is higher there are more chances that the oxides will form and this results into the poor surface finish of a hot work part and a, in case of cold working because of the less chances of oxide formation it results into the better uh, work better surface finish then again in cold working we get a closer dimensional accuracy in hot working we get a less uh, dimensional accuracy and the coefficient of friction for cold working process is lesser it's around 0.1 to 0.2 and for a hot working it is higher around 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 so these are the differences uh, between the cold working and hot working process now the important uh, another important thing is uh, we have here the stress strain curve for the ductile material so we see here this is the ultimate strength of the material uh, sorry this is the yield point and this is the ultimate point and after this zone there is a plastic deformation so this is elastic recovery this is plastic deformation and this is called as total deformation so as we have said earlier we are applying a force in such a way that this will be greater than the yield point and lesser than the ultimate point so it will fall into the plastic deformation zone and the material will get deformed now if the material has higher uh, larger plastic deformation zone then it is easier uh, to carry out the forming process so how we can increase this deformation zone or how we can widen this deformation uh, zone now the first thing is 
like we can reduce the ultimate uh, reduce the yield strength of the material or increase the ultimate strength of the material so that we can widen this zone so like sigma we can reduce it or we can increase this so um, by doing this we can widen the plastic deformation so now how we can reduce this ultimate yield strength okay so that's why the temperature comes into the picture because in the most of the materials with uh, increase in temperature uh, their yield strength is reduced okay so with the increase in temperature the yield strength reduces now the ultimate strength also reduces with increase in temperature but the thing is the reduction in ultimate strength is lesser than the reduction in yield strength and that's why we get the larger region here so this is the important thing that how we can uh, get this zone widen and why we are using the temperature now for steels the thing is with increase in temperature its yield strength increases within some temperature ranges so for steels uh, it is it is required that the for steels the temperature range of 150 degrees celsius to 350 degrees celsius and 750 degrees celsius to 850 degrees celsius now this in this range if we hit the steel its yield strength increases with temperature so that's why it is uh, recommended that for steels this zone should not be used so this is one important uh, factor now again with the compressive forces by applying the compressive forces the low stress in the body so the material can be stressed beyond the flow stress and which results into the permanent deformation of the body so with the help of this compressive forces we can able to induce the stresses which are greater than the flow stress of that material and hence we can get a permanent deformation so this is all about the basics of metal forming that how it is carried out what are the types what is recrystallization temperature and how it affects uh, the material so in the next lectures we will see what are the different uh, types of metal forming processes so until then if you have any questions please write into the comment section and be safe and stay happy thank you Thank you.